run the wrong direction. I think this is the first time in a couple of weeks we haven't been watching a football I know. game at the same time. <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll actually pay attention in this podcast. This go no. Yeah, probably not. You're right. No, Absolutely no, no. not. What's up, fanboys and fangirls? Welcome back to another episode of the What the Fanboys <laughs> Show. Um, yeah, no football this week. During the show. During the recording. So Sad. These sure guys will actually have to be on point. I'm sure there's football up. somewhere. <laughs> Dude, I, I can find it. <laughs> <laughs> can we talk about football real quick because i want to sure. like, talk about the whole everybody thinks it's scripted thing yeah that'll be all right let's kick it off with that so all right is you can the be NFL, a fanboy of football is the nfl scripted yeah so like i saw people arguing about this because of the newscast thing that had the niners uh ravens super bowl tagline and who was performing at halftime i've seen some stuff that like vegas has che- welcome to las vegas kansas city chiefs stuff already set out um there's all these things <clears throat> And I'm a part of this Facebook group called Everything Football. And they just post about all football leagues. And they were talking about this scripted thing. Mm -hmm. right? And I had this like epiphany. And I think it's the most brilliant thing I've ever thought of as a retort to the the NFL is scripted folks. Um, If the NFL was scripted, I think Antonio Brown would have told the world by now. (laughs) Like and I and I truly believe you're, that. Like it's you're a, so right. It's, right? it's a it's big like enough the, organization that someone. But yeah, you. Think if there was one person, Brown. if there was one person who would go against the NFL and say it, it's him. <laughs> yeah, and he hasn't. So I don't think it's scripted. Get over it, people. Move on. I saw the thing about the uh, the colors and the mm-hmm. Super Bowl logo. Mm-hmm. It's like oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that is kind of a weird coincidence. It is. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of things, but people cling on. Everybody's got their tinfoil hats. Well, I mean, this year there's there's two red teams and there's I mean it's purple and blue, but yeah, it still kind of matches up no matter what. Yep. Plus, there's only really so many colors you can choose from out of the NFL teams. Yeah, like most of them have red or blue. <laughs> they're very it's, they're very common colors. That is true. Yeah. Yeah. Over in the chat, Easton's excited. Chiefs AFC Championship bound again. That's right. Let's go. Baby. Bad bad uh, weekend to be a Bill Bill a Beals Bills fan. A Beals. A Beals. <laughs> Beals. Fan. Oh Beals. <laughs> Pat McAfee, man. Got that yeah, accent con- stuck in my head. Congrats, uh, Chiefs fans. Uh, I will be rooting against you this week. It's okay. okay. Everybody else is too. <laughs> we don't really care. Yep. We've come to accept. We've come to accept the. Uh, I don't know. We're the. You're the patriots. The patriots of, this of the decade. last of yeah of this decade exactly. Where everybody hates you. Yeah, it's fine. Yep. So, Baroque says, "I always ask why all other thirty-one owners reps would throw their team under the bus in favor of another team." To which people always say, "What do the owners have to do with it?" Is that what the scripted? Thing? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean. <clears throat> It would just be everybody knows the scripted, and we're just all making money off of they it. They get paid enough that it's not, yeah. yeah. I don't know. There's just too many people in the NFL, I think, to go along with that, and it never to get out. Yeah. So. Plus, I mean, <clears throat> like with wrestling being scripted, but it's it's still a sport. Yeah. Because of what they're doing. But everyone knows. But everyone knows, and that's scripted. part of what makes it awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's like what I think it's the best explanation of wrestling ever, and it's from Glow. And it's when Betty Gilpin's character is like, oh, it's a soap opera. Yeah. It's like you watch a soap opera, you know it's, it's fake. Story lines and stuff, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's, a, it's a story. You're watching a story. If yeah. anyone were to invent storylines around the NFL, I would say it, it's, I mean, people like us, but only for the NFL, like actual NFL, like pundits and media and, and people like that who, who want to create that drama to get clicks. Yeah, and it, it would be way bigger. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, I don't don't think there's any large uh, pundit groups for uh, WWE wrestling. No. <laughs> I can't believe they not, don't get on and argue about that. who's a better heel. <laughs> Dude, They're also great, using though. the word heel, <laughs> so it's like, oh yeah, he's the bad guy. Oh. He's gone heel. This all Anyways, makes sense. sorry for that. I just I had that epiphany about Antonio Brown, and I posted it in that group because they were all arguing about it. And one dude just responded was like holy s you're so right <laughs> and i was like thanks man he would not be able to keep his mouth shut no. that's so no. funny and definitely I agree. 
Um, well, before we hop into our main topic uh, tonight, let's talk about some trailers. There were news, some new trailers that came out this week. I'm Was curious. There? I know you just kind of walked in here at the last minute, Tyler, so we'll see if you've seen any of them. Probably not, but, you know, what else? Um, we First one I have, and I have these in release order, Okay. so coming out soonest. Not Best necessary. order. Um, Upgraded. This is a film on Amazon Prime. It's a rom-com-ish thing. Um, looks. I haven't even heard of this. Who's in it? I don't know. Then I'm not watching. Yeah, no, it's it's, <laughs> it's it, it looks very it looks very upgrade. rom. That's what I was like. Is this a sequel? To it's upgrade? not a sequel. No, to upgrade. no. What's That's the, definitely why I clicked on it. What's to begin that show with. where they die and put them in a computer? Upload. Upload. Oh. Okay, I was thinking. Of also, upload. an Amazon Prime show, though, right? That's why I yeah. thought it might be a sequel. Yeah. Or a no. <laughs> no. Okay. It's actually pretty good too. This was. It looked like a pretty standard rom com. Glad you watched um, it. Thank you for handling that. Yeah, yeah. It, well, it, and it has to do with, um, at least I'm pretty sure. Let me double check my, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the one where she's, um, she, the girl is like an assistant at a New York art gallery thing, and she gets upgraded to first class in the airplane as she's going over to Europe, and then she try, she convinces this guy that she's the actual art director, um, Pretty standard mm-hmm. rom-com stuff. And then she's going to get caught, and he's going to be like, why'd you lie Yeah, to yeah, me? yeah. And then they're going to settle their differences. You wouldn't fall in love with me if I was just a nobody. Oh. Yeah. We know this. We know the script on that one. Dude. <laughs> Chat GPT. <laughs> Write me a rom-com that takes place in an airplane. <laughs> There's um, your movie. <laughs> another kind of artsy, or not artsy in a different way, I guess, uh, movie, uh, The New Look. It's a series on Apple. Uh, starring Ben Mendelsohn, of all people. There's Mendo. actually quite a few big names in this. But I it's, didn't see this either. It is about um, like two fashion icons right after World War II who are trying to kind of establish what is high fashion going to be in the new world. Hmm. Um, so it's Coco Chanel versus Dior. Dior? Dior Sounds is right. the thing. Um who is that's Ben Mendelssohn's? Look at what I'm wearing. I don't know anything about fashion. I'm trying, man. I'm in my Under Armour. <laughs> I'm in a work hoodie and sweat shorts. Uh, this one's coming out. It's a, a series. Uh, the first episode drops on February 14th. <gasps> cool. So, Ooh, Valentine's. Day. It looks incredibly well made. I don't know if it will be. I think it's got me, a lot of talent. Uh, for but... me, I think anything that's like that, the reviews have to be. Very, Very favorable good. for me to have any real interest in it. Because based on your description of it, it's not yeah. me. It's yeah. not something I'd watch. I thought it was a good trailer, though. I'll give it a thumbs cool. up. Um, Constellation. This is a new series, another new series on Apple TV. Uh, February 21. Um, based on the video game no, Starfield. <laughs> <laughs> it stars Naomi Rapace. Rip, 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 there you go. Excuse me. Blah, 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 blah. And uh, it's blah, about blah, blah, after blah, blah, she blah. comes home from... Uh, space and is seeing things and maybe there are aliens involved. I did see this one. I liked. I I thought this looked great. <clears throat> I think this looks good. Yeah. New 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 Me Rapace is fantastic. Mm-hmm. So I'm interested. So that sounds more interesting than the fashion icons fighting over what the world will look like. It's got some like some thriller stuff in it. Um, esque kind of like they... Annihilation. I don't. Know, it gave me some Annihilation vibes. She's Ooh. talking to her daughter at some point and. Like maybe her daughter isn't actually her daughter, or maybe she isn't actually who she thinks she is. Was there a sound okay, effect? Okay, this sounds great. I'm I'm super into this. Was yeah. there a singular singular sound effect that sold you on the whoa, entire whoa, movie? Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> uh... I'll never forget that. Watching the Annihilation trailer, I was like, this looks okay. <laughs> okay, I'm in. Hundred <laughs> percent. Let's go. Aren't you so glad that sound worked for you? Because it is a great movie. Yeah, it is. No, oh, it is. Uh, next, also coming out on February 21st, is The Bad Batch, the final season. Yeah! Uh, starting on February 21st, but runs all the way to May. It's a 15-episode season. It's a big Three-episode premiere. And yeah. a three-episode premiere. So, um, I think this continues to look great. I've not been a huge Bad Batch fan. Um, that said, what I see in this trailer actually gets me pretty interested to watch the last season. Because I, I hear good. it's good. Yeah. Yeah. It was, I mean, both seasons of The Bad Batch are kind of up and down throughout. Mm-hmm. But then it ended so strong. The last two episodes were great. Um, 
but yeah, this trailer was awesome. I'm super hyped. Um, there's a consistency in the Star Wars animated stuff where they're like, okay, our audience might be growing up a little bit. Cause yeah. It's been a year. It's been another year. It's been another year now. So it's like <laughs> the it's series kind you. of ages with them and mm, gets a little more mature. So yeah. <laughs> like I remember the beginning of Clone Wars. <laughs> like it's just like, okay, this is kind of cool. And then, like, you're in season four, and Ahsoka and Anakin are just chopping heads off people. You're just like, man, oh this, boy. this is really violent. <laughs> Anakin's just straight up, like, murdering people because they're hitting on Padme and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. But, yeah, very, very excited for this. Classic Anakin. <laughs> what a guy. He kills people. It's kind of his thing. Um, he gets real good at it over time. <laughs> Yeah, uh, he quit. He was yeah. a quitter. <laughs> what a coward. On March 1st, uh, we get the next Adam Sandler Netflix movie, this Space Man. Space Man. All this, right. I think this looks good. This is like surprisingly good looking. Yeah. I'm like totally digging this. Yeah. With the title Space Man, I was like, oh, it's going to be like a spacey comedy. Mm-hmm. And then I watched the trailer and I was like, uh, maybe not. I'm <laughs> always Seems a little more serious. Right. I'm always on board. For the next Adam Sandler drama. Because he makes all these dumb movies. Where he's not that good in them. They're only funny half the time. And. You forget he's a fantastic. Actor. Yeah. And then it's like uncut gems. You're just like oh. Well he's awesome. Or uh. Now Spaceman. I'm really excited to see his performance. I think it looks really good. I'm also excited Same. to see what he makes after Spaceman. Because usually after he does something really serious or, or you know, drama, he'll be like, all right, let's give us a Hubie Halloween. Yeah, <laughs> like he yeah just, he just Hubie goes, Halloween too. Dude, let's do it. I'd be so down. He always does something super goofy afterwards. So. Yeah. But no, I think this looks good. I'm excited for it. Agreed. Big thumbs up. Uh, next, another Netflix uh, movie coming out, or sorry, Netflix series coming out on April 4th is Ripley. This stars... I saw a still from this. Andrew I haven't seen the trailer Scott. Yet. Um, I thought it looked really good. It's a it's a thriller. Yeah, I saw, I saw a still from it, and I was like, oh, interesting. It was black and white. Mm-hmm. Is the whole show or setting up that way? Or? I think so. Okay. It's kind of neat. I just saw the trailer but i never watched it <laughs> kind of as you were like scrolling it was like it auto played ah, okay we'll just... <laughs> <laughs> um i i really like adam scott or yeah andrew scott excuse me um adam scott also. adam scott is also i great. also really like <laughs> both of the scots um not related i assume uh but yeah no this was a thumbs up trailer for me it looks good sick um april 19th a uh, so film coming out called abigail oh yeah i don't care about this i uh, looked i knew luke wouldn't care about this but this is i didn't see it this is about a, a girl Dracula's who gets kid cat kidnapped and she's a vampire so it's a no no you're locked in here with me kind of movie hmm. the kidnappers are all like oh it's okay we're gonna keep you like we don't want to hurt you and and she's like you're this, all going to die this is something i always struggle with and i've I've never even seen Don't Breathe. I've heard it's great because I just like, it's like, will I care about mm-hmm. these people? Because mm-hmm. everybody in the movie is a bad guy. Yeah. It's like we're committing a horrible crime. Turns out this person is just worse. <laughs> Who do I root for? <laughs> is it a, it's, it's something I can never get behind. It's the whole lesser of two evils conversation. Like, she's a child, so like maybe Is that's she? Better. She might be 8,000 years old. That's true. I don't know. <laughs> Not revealed in the trailer, so... Hmm. Just saying she's a vampire and she's pretty okay with just chopping them up. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, the last trailer I have on here is uh, Hitman. Ooh, yeah. Glenn I Powell. saw people talking about this. Uh, coming out in June on Netflix. I didn't watch it because the only commentary I saw on it was... Saw on it. Saw on it. Um, was, we need to take down Netflix. I guess people are just seeing the only on Netflix stuff and they're really tired of it. Oh. Weird. I have no idea what this movie actually huh. is. It's just, I saw nothing positive about He's this. It's a... just like, we need Netflix Ooh, to like take a hit. Um, I feel like they've been taking hits. But there's <laughs> somehow I, it's still on top of the streaming world. I know we haven't done a, a streaming wars update in a while, but like, 
bring back the map bring back the map i, I should i should um no this is about him who uh glenn powell's a hitman who falls in love with his dude he is target. just embracing the rom-com life isn't he oh wow that sounds terrible i'm not gonna lie <laughs> I don't just know. I just thought, knowing only that, like that sounds about as cliche as the plane movie. He, he, <laughs> Why don't we just combine than, them? It looks better than plane. <laughs> um, plane isn't that the Kevin Hart heist plane movie? Oh, that's called. Uh... No, that's something else. I was thinking of the Gerard Butler plane movie. <laughs> oh, isn't there a Gerard Butler plane movie? Where what they was the crash? art director? No, it's a Liam Neeson. Yes. There's a Liam Neeson like plane there's, movie. There's a killer on the plane. There's too many plane movies. There Snake. was. There's another trailer I did not mention. What is it? But it involves too. a plane. It's a plane that crashes in the ocean and it goes like underwater and there's an air pocket and they start getting attacked by sharks in the Shark. plane. Dude, no Sharknado way. Yeah. 18. That sounds better than half the trailers you just talked about. It looked incredibly too stupid to mention, but there you go. Now that now I guess I've mentioned it. As somebody that really likes stupid movies, <laughs> if they're stupid enough, but not too stupid, I could get behind that. An air pocket underneath the ocean. Do they not do like do they go into a cave? Or is it just in the ocean? No, no, it's like, so the, the plane, as or the, I've... the water inside the plane makes an air pocket for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, the, okay. the plane crashes. The plane's, like, 300 feet underwater. <laughs> <laughs> what is this called? <laughs> plane shark attack movie. What's it called? I don't remember. I think... If a plane is going to hit it? the water at that angle, it's going to get destroyed. So, I've already... <laughs> they've already broken... The rules, and I'm loving it. Da, 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 da. It's called No Way Up. That's right. No Way Up. Yes. Dude, I'm so in. <laughs> that sounds like a boy band song. <laughs> it's No Way Up. Going back down. We're climbing the ladder till we hit the ground. Oh, baby. Let's go. What did you, what did you, did you find more details? No, I just found the trailer. I'm about we to found watch the whole it. movie okay. on TikTok. <laughs> so Tyler's gonna give us a live commentary while he watches this trailer. Should have just watched the trailer for the bear. All right, instead. so we for the bear. Yeah. <laughs> so we are on a plane with some folks. They are laughing and carrying on. Some lens flare to get us started. I think we should um, distinguish right now. Nobody communicates this much on a plane. We all hate each other on planes. Yeah, this is also true. Oh, some birds flew through the engines. They're going down. We're solely when you need him. Discount Will Ferrell is very concerned. <laughs> oh, the whole side of the plane just blew up. All right, they are... They're just breaking all the rules. Oh, I see how this air pocket's going to be created. <laughs> okay. Not with science. Not with science. <laughs> that is a very good point. Oh, man. And right there, the plane would float. <laughs> All right, so they are at the bottom of, not the bottom of the ocean. Oh, it's from the 47 meters down, people. <laughs> do, do they, they only got, know what to do shark They movies? got one kind of movie, baby. <laughs> so they have this air pocket in this plane. What else can we do with a shark? Dude, this, this is dumb enough that I would laugh watch it. Dude, what if this is actually secretly a Meg movie? That'd be sick. Oh, the sharks are peeking in. Oh, that guy's done for. The Meg 3, <laughs> no way up. Like, what's the... Okay, so here's the thing with this. What is the solution that makes any sense in this movie? They're like, yeah, we can just swim out. It's fine. We're not, you know, 300 feet below the surface. They do mention that there's like... They wouldn't be got, able to see. We've got to wait X amount of time like before rescuers get... we got to survive 48 hours before rescuers will get to us. Oh, there's which I don't folks. know how they... Of course the rescuers get bit or eaten. No choice but to swim, right? Oh, they got Outrun. scuba masks. As a, sh a person that really enjoyed watching Shark Week a lot... Shark movies really do make me mad a lot of the time. It's just like, this would not be happening. <laughs> Dude, it looks so bad. It looks so, so bad. bad. Thumbs up. Yeah, thumbs <laughs> No. I don't know. It, the, it looks awful. The follow-up question, the right question to ask is, where does this release? 
Yeah. Because that is a, that's, mm. is that's that a, a theatrical good, release. That's a good point. I don't know. Because I won't go watch 47 it. 47 meters down or whatever was theatrical. Comes out February 16th. So they're marketing it for less than a month. Um, I'll go see it if it's 0% on Rotten Tomatoes, I guess. Looks like Fandango's got it on there. I bet it's in theat. I bet it's in theaters. Well, oh, I it will- arrives in select theaters. I will give it a straight to streaming right select now. Select theaters. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, if it gets a zero percent, I'll go see it. I'm in. It sounds dumb enough that sounds, I could be entertained. I was gonna say I'll just bring my Regal refillables and be happy with my. We could go to twenty one. <laughs> you guys get plastered, dude. That sounds great. You drive and I'll us. just I'll just suffer. <laughs> you just drive us. Oh no! I'm yeah, all... right. I'm the designated driver. Love it. <laughs> designated driver. I'm game. <laughs> oh my goodness! All right. Well, that's you know plenty of talk uh, about new trailers. So good, good job. There's a new shark movie, but not Ooh. enough talk about sharks. Oh, sharks! Do you have more to talk about with sharks, Luke? I just think they're pretty cool. Okay, fair they're enough. They're a pretty neat creature. I'm terrified of them, but they're they're pretty neat. I got good news for you. No sharks in Kansas. <laughs> yeah, no, we're definitely good here. We're safe. Unless you uh, have a bookie problem. <laughs> yeah, I don't have a bookie problem. Okay. <laughs> no sharks in Kansas. Don't need to worry about it. Oh, yeah. my nope. goodness. All right, well, let's talk about um, Xbox's Developer Direct. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was on Thursday Correct. last week, uh, in which Hellblade 2 did not get stealth dropped. Nope. Come I'm on. pretty sure. Come on, Phil. I was expecting him to I do, listen to the podcast. Just speaking of Hellblade, I am very happy for Xbox to hold that and release it at their own thing, like releasing the date on their own event. Instead oh, of the yeah. Game Awards. Like, yeah. Because that was only a month ago. I and feel... they, they were like, yeah, we're just going to do it at our own thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's cool. Didn't like Ryan McCaffrey or somebody come out and say it's not getting stealth dropped? They came out and said that like Xbox announced they weren't. They, McCaffrey had reached out to Xbox to ask, and Xbox is like, we're not stealth dropping anything. Like, trying to set the expectation. Yeah, that's fair. So Smart. Um, because, you know, last year it was Hi-Fi Rush, and so yeah. everybody was like, ooh, what's it going to be this year? And there's space for a fifth... Indiana Jones. <laughs> <laughs> there's space for a fifth studio or a fifth game. What's it going to be? <laughs> and there was a fifth game. There was a fifth there game. There was. But was. not stealth dropped. No. Not stealth dropped, no. correct. We, we should uh, go through these. I... Finally got a chance. I watched the direct today. Um, First, for starters, I like this format. Yeah. Um, of the developer directs, I like it. There's no pomp and circumstance. Mm-hmm. It's four slash five videos, basically cut together in a cool kind of creative way. And that's it. If there's one that you're like really not vibing with, you just fast just forward. fast forward through it. Yeah. Um, oh, I was watching it live. I think. Okay, yeah. Uh, if you yeah. watch it live, you can't do that, but. Agreed, and you get to see a little more behind the scenes than you would at like the Game Awards. Yeah, yeah. So they kicked it off with a vowed, mm-hmm. um, which <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think it'll have an audience. It will. It, it definitely will. Um, Obsidian has its its diehard fans. Mm-hmm. Um, here, here's what I'll say: I thought it showed better than it did prior. But I still don't think it's a game that I will spend a ton of time with. I think Luke nailed it on the head in our. Yeah. I didn't want to steal it from him. Chat. What did I say? Hold on. You had mentioned Obsidian <laughs> and Bethesda. It just looks like an aged Bethesda game, oh, right? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. It just looks like it should have come out fifteen years ago. Like yeah. I played not, Star- not visually, but just in terms of again, yeah. Starfield. Starfield had similar problems. Where and that like, was supposed to be. Everyone is assuming next gen cutting edge. Yeah. Bethesda's next thing, and it was like, oh, I've, I've played this. Yeah. And there, are, when there's other games out there that do way more this better, <clears throat> it it doesn't necessarily show well. Um, when okay, yeah, we're talking about this quest line, and it's kind of back and forth on. Okay, well, we're just seeing the back and forth, same little cutscene type thing now. What they described on some of the choices you make in in dialogue and through quests, that's that's pretty neat. And I think the combat system looks interesting with how you can pair different the loadout system. The loadout yeah, system. Yeah, you can just switch at any time. Yeah. You want to run with a wand and a sword, or a wand and a gun, or a wand and a wand. Like that's 
That's kind of cool. I don't think I was expecting a gun. <laughs> like, it starts and he's got like a shield and a pistol, and I was like, oh, whoa, what is this? Yeah, uh, all right. <laughs> I um, I don't think the combat looks good. Um, and that's I think that's another big portion of why it looks outdated to me. Mm-hmm. It looks like Oblivion. It doesn't even look like Skyrim. Mm. Um, and I think it might, might have been a big part was they showed the wands a lot. Yeah. And I was replaying Hogwarts at the same time. Mm. And I'm watching them flick these little wands around and it just felt like there was no impact on anything that we're doing. They're just going, swing, swing, swing. They're dead. Yeah. It's just like, what was happening right there? What type of spell even was that? And then just like... And it seems like wands are tied to spells, too, based on what they were kind of discussing. Yeah. Which I think is weird. Yeah. I was like, oh, interesting. (laughs) But I... Like, based on, like, the... I don't know if it'd be the box art or key art. Mm -hmm. There's a, like, flowery skeleton. Looks awesome. And then I look at the game, and I'm just like, that doesn't look the same. Yeah. There's this awesome vibe in this art they put out, and then the game is like... 2004 <laughs> Bethesda. Well, and I think the other problem too is is like remember when this game was first announced and like the vibe was completely different. It was a very dark skeletons yeah. everywhere. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Okay, this is kind of cool." And then the next time we saw it, it was like really colorful and vibrant. And I was like, "Oh." And I was like, "Ugh." <laughs> I don't like, what, are, what are we there, I don't there's mind a big it. shift. No. It's but it is confusing yeah. as a, you know, I think Someone every time we've at it seen a, it from a purchasing perspective, okay, well, what what am I expecting to get into when the first time you show it, it's like, okay, dark and serious. We're okay. We, well, we have Dark Souls and all these other games to kind of compare it to, um, and now it's like, oh, well, is this more of like a uh, kind of outer uh, world know, Sea of Thieves, yeah. outer worlds? Yeah, and it's I, going think, bones. <laughs> I think it's it's gonna land in the outer worlds where it's kind of goofy. And yeah, like. And that's fine. It's just the every time we've seen it, it's felt different. Mm-hmm. So, and mm-hmm. and I, I get it. The game's being developed. It's going to feel different. But they don't necessarily mean that in a good way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's interesting, too. You bring up Outer Worlds. I mean, it's their last game. Yeah. But that was a game I liked. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I never beat it. And I'm I'm a kind of I'm not a key completionist, but I'm a finisher. Yeah, I was yeah, going to say, if you, you, if you start I a game, usually, you generally finish it. I yeah. usually beat games... And I kind of just stalled out on it. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think the decision making was interesting, but honestly, that's nothing nothing new anymore. Yeah, and that was kind of one of the things they featured. Like your choices matter, and it's like mm, it's like every game now. Yeah, <laughs> no, for sure. And it's it's never as good. It's never been as good as you expect it to be. Yeah. No, for sure. The impacts aren't heavy enough. Until Baldur's Gate. Yeah. So, overall, when we're thinking about Avowed, thumbs up, thumbs down? I, I won't thumbs down it. I'll sideways thumb it. I, I don't think I care enough about it to give it a thumbs down. Um, I'm sideways, but it's like tilting. leaning down. <laughs> it's yeah. on Game Pass. I'll play it. Sure. Yeah, so. I think I'll, I'll probably boot it up and check it out just to see kind of what's going on. Because... Mm-hmm. Because like Luke, I also liked Outer Worlds, and I also didn't finish it. And like that happens a lot for me, just because of time. But yeah. I played a decent bit of Outer Worlds, and eventually, just I, I don't know, just didn't hit all the right buttons down the stretch. Yeah. But uh, yeah, sideways thumb for me. Okay, uh, sideways thumb for me as well. Next, we have Hellblade Two coming May, uh, and Avowed is coming fall twenty twenty four. Hellblade Two is coming out May twenty one twenty twenty four. Let's go, baby. Yeah, uh, this was a a really great showcase look inside. I mean, I think we're all fans of the first Hellblade and just what they did with that story and kind of some of the gameplay mechanics and the uniqueness of how they told the story. Mm-hmm. Um, and th- and they mentioned that and they they I like how they go and they say, okay, it's not going to be exactly like the first game. Like we're not doing the exact same thing. It's going to broaden. Um, kind of the picture of the world mm-hmm. and the experiences and um 
she's going to grow as a character mm-hmm. and won't necessarily have the same struggles, you know, that she has in the first one. The voices will still be there, but they're, they're going to be different in a way. I, I really liked all of that. I yeah. love watching the the Furies record it, too. Dude, yeah. How they just walk around a mic and, like, just yeah. talk and that whisper cool. to each other. I, I also just think, too, like, listening to them talk about, like, you know, maybe you know somebody who's going through this. And, yeah. And I love, like, if I were to, to – if the Game Awards had a betting category on sports betting apps, I would bet this wins Game for Impact because they, they always are going after that. They, they pursue like that heavily. It's like one of the heavily. intents of the game, too. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I, I love that. Of it. I love that. I think that's so good. It's like – it's why Celeste is so good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because they set out with that in in as their their goal, it's the the purpose of the game is to impact people. We talk about we things. talk about this in in our film reviews often. Like it it is okay for a movie or a game to just entertain you. Yeah, like that is okay. But when it is striving to be more than that, when it wants to, and when it hits, it impact, hits. and when it when it does do it right, it's so good. Yeah, yeah. I loved what they said too. Like. And it kind of goes off that how they're just like, this is a short. It's gonna be a shorter game. Yes. With impactful story, story beats, but also just I don't know what uh, what's the word I'm looking for. They're putting impact into every portion of the game, whether it's like sound or the visuals. Tech or, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just like we're not gonna draw out the game. We have a specific story we want to tell. And then the rest of the budget can go into making that more impactful. Yeah. yeah. And just advancing the tech of yeah. gaming, too. Because like, the first game was not long. No. Eight hours? Something like that. If that. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah I think it's in that six depends if you, uh, range. Depends if you actually perma I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I played on easy, so I don't have to worry about that. Yeah, it's fine. Um, but, yeah. Big thumbs up on this one for me. Huge thumbs up. Can't wait. Can't wait, indeed. Uh, next, we got Visions of Mana. Yeah, this, this is Square Enix. This is the Square Enix game. Um, this one was a surprise, surprise, surprise. Yeah, this was the the unknown announcement. Um, first time the Mana series will be on Xbox. Yeah. So kind of a, a marked day in Xbox history, I suppose. What? And the world is yeah, happening. Like, we finally got a square. Dude, it's, <laughs> Xbox is finally getting, like, they've been working with Atlas. They've been working now with Square. Like, we'll talk about it in news a little bit, but I think Final Fantasy 16 is rumored to be coming to Xbox this year now. Like, there's there's a lot of things happening. Is that the newest one? Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a, Game the, Pass? <laughs> usually, like, absolutely not. They, they got the Atlas thing that way, though. Everybody's like, Atlas will never put games on Xbox, and then they all came to Game Pass. So maybe maybe Final Fantasy does it too. That's a big check Xbox is writing for it to be on Game I Pass. Think, I think at this point, they just want to get their foot in the door with maybe. Square, with Atlas, with all these Japanese studios, because they've been kind of kept out. They've been frozen out for so long. Yeah, um, true. But yeah, this Final Fantasy, the, the first Mana game was Final Fantasy's Ad- Final Fantasy Adventures. Oh. And then it moved into the Mana series, which is Trials of Mana. Mm-hmm. And now Visions of Mana. Dude, there's like um, 80 of them. Yeah, there's so many. They were like doing the sizzle. <laughs> they were like, flashing Good through them, and I was like, I, 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 I stopped counting. Can't keep up. Yeah, so many. Um, I don't know. This looks like a cool little action RPG. You know, I don't know if it's one I'll play. Probably yeah, not. Not but like, terribly up my alley, but yeah, I'm sure... There is gonna be. There's an audience on Xbox Big that time. doesn't hasn't had this. Big time that will enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And with it being Game Pass, too, it kind of opens the door for people to try. Yeah, yeah. And maybe find something. Find a new audience they didn't know they would enjoy. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, this that Visions Man is coming summer 2024. Uh, the next game, Aura History Untold. This is not for me. This is a <laughs> art. What is it? RTS. It's a. It's yeah. an Age of Empires. It's, a, it's, it's Age of Empires. It's a four x four RTS game. Yeah. 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 Um, I am not gonna lie. I thought this looked super cool. I, you know, I <laughs> yeah. grew up. My earliest games were the Age of Empires. I love Age, Age of Empires, Empires and, and Starcraft and, and that kind of thing. Yeah. If um, if there's a version in this game where I don't have to like compete against people and I can just 
build your build cool civilization. Stuff. Yeah, I will play this game. Yeah. yeah, I I RTS games are just so hard for me. Um, this one's also only on PC. Mm. Oh, it's not on. It was PC and PC, PC Game Pass. Only. Oh, then I won't play it. Yeah. So <laughs> no, Pepperoni I think pizza. I think the the controls look complicated enough that I was like, I wonder if yeah. Yeah, and there's just so much UI, yeah. so many so many things you had to surf through, and I was like, man, this just. The thing that stood out to me that I I really liked, and and other games may do this now, but the fact that you can kind of choose your own leader, no, or... your own winning, like game over conditions. Oh yeah, it's not just go kill everyone else and and conquer. Yeah, right. It's a hey, maybe it's about getting all of these. I don't know what they call them. Uh, the big things you build. Oh, well, they gave you points, you know, certain kind of points, relevancy points. I don't know. Uh, Epic, epic civilization points. And, you know, you can kind of customize then how you end up wanting to live your, you know, rule your civilization. So, yeah, no, it's it's a cool game. Um, I'm with you. I think it looks great for people who are a fan of that genre. Yeah. Um, I did love Age of Empires growing up. Starcraft, I, I I enjoyed those games. Dude, I loved driving around in the car that shot missiles. <laughs> I know it was a a mod or a a cheat? cheat code or whatever, but they were in the game. I mean, like I, I tried to think it was of, awesome. Absolutely, I try to think of like the the cheat code word, like the keywords or whatever. And I remember one from Starcraft was Black Sheep Wall, and it removed the fog of war. Oh, and nice. I always remember that. Removing Fog of War cheat codes were the best. Yeah. For sure. um, the car was Big Daddy. <laughs> Love it. And uh, getting food was pepperoni pizza. There was also like That's why one. why I had pepperoni pizza. There was also one for like unlimited money. There's always some cool ones. Oh, yeah. There was like a God Mode cheat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, those Dude, games I'm, are cool. But... I'm legit kind of disappointed this isn't going to be an Xbox. I didn't know that. I Age, bet it comes. Age of Empires 2 remasters on Game Pass. But this one had so many more civilizations. Yeah, it did like. have a lot. It, it had an impressive amount. Um, and in addition, some of like the craft, the crafting stuff sounded interesting. Um, I also like the leader function. The leader functions were and cool. how like you cho- whoever cho- you choose to lead you, um, they wouldn't necessarily just be politicians or right, you know, right. war heroes or whatever. It would be my leader is an yeah. influencer. <laughs> Mach- Machine, I chose the uh, machine gun TikTok babies on tricycles was the best, is what Easton says. There you go. Machine gun that. babies and tricycles on so, tricycles. Luke, was the thing that sold you at one point during this? There was a shot of some concept art of what were definitely like Voltron esque. Voltron, like mechs. mechs. Yeah, there were mechs in this. Oh, I, didn't, I for, just in the like for the future. Yeah. Oh, I missed civilization. Yeah. But you sold me even more. I might have to buy a PC. <laughs> um, no, honestly, it was when I saw the like the Mayan um, civilization. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't think it was the Mayans, but it was. It's alternate Earth, so yeah, it's it was like the Central America. Yeah. Yeah. Looking, Inspired. Yeah. Yeah. Civilizations. Definitely pretty cool. I'll give it a thumbs up. I like this one. I yeah, I thought it was cool showing. Too. Also loved that they left the dude taking a drink out. <laughs> Who's just walking through the background. Right? Yeah. And you can tell, like, the, the CEO is kind of like... <laughs> oh, that's Dave. We started in his basement. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Dave. Not even the funniest little thing, too, in the showcase that I don't think was planned. The best one was in the Indiana Jones one. Mm. <laughs> the one with Todd? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we can jump into the, the, the final thing they talked about was Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. Um, announced coming this year. Is that getting bumped to 2025? I think it's a fall release. I hope so. I think they are really wanting fall, but it could, could always could always could slip to spring bit, yeah. yeah, or winter. Fall holiday, I could see it happening. Just to make the best game. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Take your time. Uh, but this is looking good. This is Machine Games. Yep. Yeah. Um, they made Wolfenstein. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this looks this looks awesome. It made me want to play Wolfenstein because <laughs> I've never played them. And I was like, man, people rave about Wolfenstein. Yeah. And this indie game looks great. Maybe I should check it out. So This Indiana Jones game. It's not an indie game. Just to clarify yeah. for uh, 
Yes. Very good clarification. Machine there, Machine Games first indie game. <laughs> huh? Yeah, yeah I your indie this... game with a budget of. Three hundred million dollars. I thought what? this showed so well, though. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of questions about perspective, how you'd play it. Um, I love the decision to to be mostly first person with mm-hmm. some some third person elements. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm so thankful this didn't just turn into another shooter. Yeah. Because I was a little concerned that that's what this could end up being. Um, but it seems like Machine Games is like no, like we. We're, seems like they watch the movies and yeah. they're like how did how did they punch in these and they're just like big wind up <laughs> yeah and like the, the <laughs> grab the shirt and the uppercuts and like all of it i yeah. mean it just feels like indiana jones and i think yeah. that that's the biggest thing like when when you announce an ip game you have to get the tone and the feel of the movie you're yeah. you're you're working with and they've by all accounts like from what we've seen they've nailed it agreed you know? like it just looks so awesome yeah. And like I love I love 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 that they shelled out the money to get Harrison Ford's likeness for this. Um like just further commitment to what they're making. Like, mm-hmm. I just so many good decisions. They got one of the top voice actors in the game. Arguably the top right now. Yeah. Oh yeah. Is in Troy Baker who yeah. can just mm-hmm. make his voice sound like anybody yep. at this point. Um which is fantastic. Yeah. You mentioned first person. Yeah. And this is a big deal. Because it was something that I think people thought about, but also forgot about. If it was in third person, the yeah. comparisons to Uncharted would be... And Tomb Raider, yeah. Oh, yeah. Would be unlimited. They'd yeah. just be every... It's just Uncharted. It's just Uncharted. Yep. And an indie, with an indie skin on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And to just... It's such a little thing, it feels like. I mean, it's, no, it's kind of a big thing. From a dev point I'm yeah just but from like it, a consumer point yeah it, it feels it's... it changes everything how you would will play the game yeah well and machine even talked about how first person is how they feel comfortable telling stories mm-hmm. yeah and I, and I love that but there's like, but there's elements whether that's puzzle solving or, or traversal climbing, or yeah. cinematics where they want to pull out of first person yeah. and do things in third person so that you can get that more cinematic feel yeah indiana jones experience i also just want to talk about how annoying it is that like we have to make that clarification it's like it would have had an uncharted comparison it's like dude those games are inspired by indiana jones like (laughs) why are we going backwards it just it irritates me that we even have to say that um Mm -hmm. but no i i loved kind of made me want to play the uncharted games again though (laughs) i mean they're they're so good why not they're why not Luke? an all-time classic video game series top of the line like yeah. top yeah. Sh- top shelf video games up there from naughty dog maybe dude i'm mm-hmm. all i'm all aboard the indiana jones hype train i'm very uh very excited to go puzzle solving and big globe trotting um i'm curious how the actual combat will feel yeah with the whip and stuff with the whip yeah. and mm-hmm. the, the punching yeah I, and I think they talked about too. It's like, yeah, you have your gun, but you also will just pick up their guns. Yeah. I think that because that's what Indy does all the time. Right. Yeah, it's always punching a Nazi in, Nazi in the face <laughs> and stealing their MP40 and blowing them away. I loved like some of the stealth stuff we got to see. Now you can choose to kind of interact with it however you'd prefer. Mm-hmm. Um, what did you guys think of the title? I thought it was good. Yeah, I like it. I'm cool with it. At this point. I think Indiana Jones titles are just trying to be a little silly, and that's okay. So I'm 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 in with it. Well, I think this like one... dial. I hated Dial of Destiny, like the title. So so on the movie and it's, it's itself, but like <laughs> I just you know they, they I think they just they really lean into whatever it is. Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Uh, okay, is it? A, so great circle in the sense of the story, it makes sense. Yeah, and I like it. And I like what it's setting up. Yeah, I think the storyline is going to be interesting. Yeah. So I, last week we talked about conspiracy theories we bought into. I think I'm going to buy into all these monuments and man-made features in this circle around the globe are up to something. <laughs> Time travel aliens. They're, they're up to something. Well, we already got both of those. I know. So this one. So is, what is this going to be? Is this an A twenty four game? Is this demons? <laughs> <laughs> it's 
it's gonna have like very small print in the credits. Produced by A twenty four. He's like, what? I feel like it's probably ancient, advanced civil civilization without it being aliens. I like it. I'm here for it. Leads up to the sequel, which is about Atlantis or something like that. Oh, uh, oh, you just said it. I bet it's Atlantis. I bet that's the ancient civilization they could, discover. Could be, yeah, yeah. And it turns out it's actually in Kansas. Yeah. Or the Hollow Earth. More conspiracy. Maybe I should just believe in that. <laughs> that's a good one, too. They just retreated underground. Um, overall... It sounds like we all really enjoyed the Indiana Jones. Thumbs, Thumbs up, up, Indiana Thumbs Jones. Up. Can't wait. Look Overall, better than I expected it to. What's your, like, you know, school grade uh, for the direct overall? Uh, I'll give it a solid B. I, th- I, think it, I think it's a good showcase. It's not uh, trying to... This isn't trying to be winter games fest right this right, is, this is right. trying to be xbox setting the stage for hey this is what we got for 2024 these are our big ones um this is what you have to look forward to and this is what's closest to ready and i think that level of transparency is is very nice to have yeah um i think xbox has been so good with their messaging um especially since the debacle that was redfall mm-hmm. um they've done a really good job trying to like save face and earn back some goodwill so yeah for me i think you know solid b okay i think it's very good job nice luke i think i give it a b as well you know what i'd give it a b minus okay um a high b minus like as high as a b minus could be <laughs> a high b mi- we've already subdivided into plus and minuses and now you're subdividing it's again like into... instead of a 3.25 it's like a 3.27 i yeah. asked for letter grades <laughs> no i'm just giving yeah, I, yeah. not gpas <laughs> um mainly because of avowed which is the game i would typically be interested in yeah and i just feel like they've never showed that game well it's also part, this has not been said, it's part of a franchise already, Pillars of Eternity, mm. yeah, which I have just no, no connection to, and they bring that up a lot, and I'm just like, whatever. Yeah. Don't care. And, I even kind of forgot that. Yeah, same. <laughs> I, um, I but, do, as much as they may have brought it up, I do feel like it's been being marketed as it's kind of its own thing. thing. Yeah, and then also, their pre-show, because I watch it live is it's like fun facts on the screen Mm -hmm. but it's a keyboard typing them out and it's so annoying to listen to (laughs) clickety clackety yeah is it like my keyboard it's except it sounds fake (laughs) um it was so irritating and like i'm not listening to it for the the whole time i'm yeah have it muted but when the show like is getting close you unmute it so you're ready to watch and it's just click it's like oh this is bad and it was like the same four facts over and over again Mm. like just just do a countdown play some music yeah it's cool yeah just play some halo music i don't know (laughs) play music from your play your most iconic games music seems like a smart idea or Um, even fun game clips from people that on twitch that community things yeah. yeah i am going to give this a plus a b plus Okay. Because I think it has a decent variety. I High think B plus they... or a low B plus? <laughs> Just a B plus. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not buying into your bit, Luke. 88. Mine's a mid high, <laughs> mid to high B. Um, 86. I think it's got yes. a good, uh, a good range of games. You know, it's it maybe the one that stands out as missing right now is like what like. Is there like a big FPS this year, and it's just not in this, and that's okay. Call of Duty. But that's okay. <laughs> Um, because I think Hellblade showed it incredibly well. Indiana Jones showed incredibly well. Um, Aura, I think it's maybe a little more niche, yep. especially with it only being on PC. But it showed well. But I think it showed really well. Yeah. I did not and, my score down a little bit because I didn't know it was only on PC. And I guess they did communicate that well. <laughs> even uh, The Visions of Mana, which I wouldn't say is a game I'm that interested in, I thought... Showed well. Showed well. Yeah. Um, Avowed, I'm kind of on the... I 
more or less agree with you after this discussion in that it, I don't know if it showed all that well, um, but I think it's, you know, Obsidian does goofy well, and if they can they lean into that. So at the end of the day, for me, it's 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 a little better than average. Yeah. And I, I know it's not fair. I know it's not. But everybody's going to do it. I just don't know how you make a fantasy, high fantasy RPG after Baldur's Gate. Yeah. I would be scared out of my mind. It's fair. Because the, the comparison is, it's going to happen. It's going to be there. It's yeah. it's fair and unfair because they're different games. They're different mm-hmm. types of games. You know what I'm more scared of? Because I think this is a... It's almost. I think this will feel like a, a like a sub genre game. I'm more worried about Elder Scrolls Elder Scrolls Six, not feeling like it lives up to Baldur's Gate, because that game is suppo- is going to cost three hundred million dollars and and is it going to feel like two thousand? Is it going? Yeah, is it going to feel like Skyrim? <laughs> well, People love it, Skyrim, but if it, it if it doesn't feel as good as Baldur's Gate, it's going to get raked over the coals. Thankfully, I mean, that game is. You know, like eight years old. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean that's also part of the problem. If the game takes that long to make, by the time it releases, it's going to be on the old fad, mm-hmm. and it's going to be it's going to come out and you're going to be like, oh, this feels like got to get some thinkers in there. Yep. Be yep. like, how can we change things up? Well, and the, you got to probably make some bets and not and, and it's take hard. Some risk. Yeah, because not all they don't always pay off. Yeah, Maybe but. there'll be a thousand planets in Elder Scrolls Six. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> We did, uh, it looks like Dead Fist had a comment. Uh, they needed either Gears or a Fable update to give it that A. Um, look, if it had a Gears update, yeah, I probably would bump it to an A just because I love the Gears franchise, but I don't know that it needed it. I think it should be said, too, this was confirmed games for 2024. Yeah. Yeah. And that's... Both, both of those aren't coming out this year. So. Correct. I think It would have been nice to hear the Gears was coming out this year. Remember when was the last time we got a Gears game? 2019? Oh, I guess you 20 guys... 20 or 21. You guys reviewed... Halo Gears was 21. Five, so. Infinite was 21, so it would have had to have been before that. Let's look it up. I mean, it was before COVID. Yeah, it was 18 or 19, Ty. It was 19, yeah. So, I, I, I feel like I'm kind of with JT in that the fact that we haven't heard anything from Gears in so long, and I know that it's a... It's it's one of their AAA franchises, so they want to probably give it as big of a platform as they can, and maybe the direct feels too small for that. Summer. At the same time, I think, oh boy, that would have opened some eyes. Yeah, I think if they don't now, I mean now we're we're looking ahead, right? If they don't announce Xbox or if they don't <laughs> announce Gear Six at Xbox. the Xbox's yeah. portion of Summer Games Fest, I'll be concerned. Yeah, I, I think. And especially with what we'll get into with news and Halo and mm-hmm. kind of what's going on there, they have to announce it. Yeah. Whether it comes out two, three years from now, it doesn't matter. Just say it's in development. They have to say it. Yeah. They, Is it confirmed? Like, no. Xbox no. has been like, we're working on this. No. Nope. Or even the Coalition. No. <laughs> the Coalition. That's yeah. a cool name. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I think I think they have to announce it this summer. Um, Agreed. And honestly, I kind of said it when we were texting the other day, but I think they have to announce it, and all these Marcus Phoenix collection rumors need to be true, it, and it needs to be dropped when they announce Gear Six. They, I, this, this is kind of like one of those like uh, when we talk about NFL, like do do they need to win this week type of thing? Like it needs to be true, or it needs to not be true, and they need to put that. They rumor need to, to put bed. it to bed. Correct. They need to bury that thing. Yep stop talking about it we're not working on it so yeah one way or the other yeah i can't believe that clarification this year i think i can't believe they haven't announced a gears collection as if the master chief collection isn't the best selling halo game they put out (laughs) yeah and like still played and probably more played than infinite is definitely more supported than infinite yeah and is there a is there a modding community for that too? Since it's on PC, I or think so. Is that Probably. Loud or? I think so. Probably. Like <laughs> announcing a Gears or the Marcus Phoenix collection 
I, just, I think would be such a smart move. I don't even like Gears. I could care less about Gears of War. No offense to games you like. That's but, fine. like, I don't know. Also, I was a business student, so it's just, like, do good business. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, we yeah. can... Uh... Announce this thing that everybody will be really excited for. A lot of people will buy. Hopefully, we'll have lots well. to talk about this summer. When yeah, it and like the years. rumor is too. Sorry, before just one last thing before we move on. The rumor is too. They're they're trying to remake the main entry games in Unreal Engine Five, so like it would look great. Yeah. Right. Like, it just it need like maybe years I'll, one has gotten the refresh, but do it again. Yeah. Maybe I'll finally beat that ram. The literal last <laughs> mission of the game. Dude, those bats were so annoying. Yeah, and I, had I can confirm. Very what annoying. what am I? Bad at video games. I'm bad at video games. So when I get frustrated in a game that I don't really like, I'm going to quit. Yeah. Quitter. We I'm just quitter. talked about how you like finish, finish games. games, though, Luke. But he doesn't oh. like third-person shooters, either. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah. so, good point. So, like, it, that, that's tough. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's fair. They left. They made a. They took a huge risk in Gears 5, and since then, they've not announced anything, and I think that's concerning. Any Hoosers, moving on. Anyway, I should say, too, when I was playing it, I wasn't really a gamer yet. Like, I was... I was a, a noob. I was a little novice. What a noob. I was all like, Call of Duty's the best video game ever made. <laughs> <laughs> My gosh. That sounds exactly like you. Okay, let's move on to news. <laughs> I mean, I said it, so... <laughs> I hope it sounds like me. Um, Tyler was hinting at yeah. some Halo news. You want to go ahead yeah, and lead yeah. us off so, with that? So, like, just the news thing that I wrote down, uh, 343 is seemingly moving on from Halo Infinite. Um, this was in Eurogamer. Sounds like they're going to leave a skeleton crew on to do like some... They're not even... After Season 5, they're done with Seasons. They're going to the Operation format, which we've seen them do Operations, and they've been good. The operations aren't bad. Um, but it seems like this will be the last round of maps added, Armor Cores. Um, armor Core? Putting on the shoulders to everything now. Like They've they've pretty much fixed all the initial complaints, and then they're going to kind of move on from it. Yep. Um. I think this is a huge bummer because Halo's finally where it should have been. At least on the multiplayer side. Correct. Right? And so, like, for them to move on from it now feels just, I don't know, almost disingenuous. Yeah. It's like, hey, we got it there. See ya. Right. Like, I, I don't know. It feels it feels bad, man. It, it feels really bad. And, like, I don't play Halo a ton, but I do go back to it. It's kind of like my comfort food. Mm -hmm. Like. I don't know what I want to play. I want to play Halo because Halo Infinite's multiplayer is good. It makes me so happy to ha hear that from like a Gears. Guy. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> dude, and and I go back to Gears Five every now and again too. Like those games for me are just they're comfortable. Yeah, they're where I like to be when I don't know what I want to do. Yeah, um, and Halo is like it feels really good right now. And now like they hit you with this news and you're like, oh. what this tells me is, the shop utterly failed. Yes, the shop. Like their microtransactions. Oh, um, big duh. time. <laughs> just they're not selling enough things to justify keeping X amount of developers on this. Um, this is why they, market research is so important, though. When you launch something like this, you have to get it right. Yeah, you don't have the opportunity to fix it. Yeah, very often. No, I'm but. curious what the shop and customization is like in Halo. Like, do things vary a lot? Or is it just like, oh, that helmet is kind of like what I got. I'm not gonna spend twenty dollars on it. No, I think the I think the shop items are pretty typically pretty unique. Yeah, okay. they're different for sure. Because like I'm coming from Destiny, where I can wear a cowboy hat. And I'm like, yeah, we're not not that unique. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, or like even yeah. like in Fortnite, I can be Spider Man or right. Yeah, freaking like Halo, Family Guy. Dude. You can do. You know, they had like the samurai armors. Mm -hmm. Those were cool. Um, that were different from the ones in the battle passes. I thought the hazmat stuff from a couple seasons was ago was really, really cool. cool. I love the the moss stuff was nice. Mm -hmm. um, the cat ears, the Christmas stuff is always fun. Ooh, cat ears. Um, the cat ears look dope. Yeah, honestly, yeah, actually, like, they work really well. The they cat look ear super dance is cool. my go-to dance. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I mean so the shop it, had variety. It might have just been Halo fa Halo community was just like, no, we're not buying. Well, stuff. I mean, yeah, I mean they took a huge swing. With trying to bring that to Halo, I mean, yeah, that was that was risky, it especially was. in the Master Chief Collection where you can earn everything. I was gonna say Halo has almost always had a track, a way to to earn everything, and it was hard. Um, 
It wasn't always easy. <laughs> it, and especially after, because Halo 5 had, they had... The uh, credits. They thing. had randomized loot box esque type yeah, things like where the you the packs could... or whatever yeah 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 Ooh, the gambling. rec packs yeah. rec packs gambling. and those did not go over well at all so this was a pretty hard pivot from that to something that was a little more transparent was that post battlefront 2 they had put no. those in 20 no or, was, or this is the Col- master chief collection this no no this was halo 5 which would have oh, been okay. 15 okay. 14 or 15, <laughs> okay. 15 yeah because like i feel like that's just unheard of now post battlefront 2 yeah. which pretty much killed the boxes yeah for sure sure that would have been an impressive decision coming from 343 <laughs> right you know the thing everybody hated like we're gonna just... double down did we have any other gaming news or some more um just curious yeah i got um three the day before has officially shut its servers down oh the game oh, lasted 45 know? days RIP. wow what a sad story halo infinite Still more successful than the day before. <laughs> the day before, the, one of the most successful scams until it wasn't. Um, <sighs> this is kind of... I don't mind, I'll move to this one. Rocksteady revealed today that the Joker will be the first playable character post-launch content oh, for yeah. Suicide Squad Kills the Justice League. Be and the what is the only close. <laughs> they, no, they announced their roadmap. There's three more. I don't know if it'll ever get done, but this is probably the worst Joker design I've ever seen. Did that Spider-Man DLC ever come out for Avengers? Yeah. Okay. That was a legit, honest question. I had no idea. I did, because I've seen the swinging from it, and I thought it was like a PS2 game. That's right. Now I remember. It looked horrible. It's so bad. And everybody was like, dude, because it was the same time as Fortnite. Yeah. And people in Fortnite were like, Spider-Man is better in the freaking (laughs) kid shooter game than the Marvel licensed video game. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, no. So, uh... Yeah, they announced it's the Joker. They announced some playable locations, some episodes is what they're calling them. One Scarecrow, one was somebody else. They announced some Riddler stuff. Is that game tracking any better than we thought it would? I don't know. I, I've heard some people, like, there's always this group on the internet that's going to say everything's good or everything's bad, right? Sure, like, sure. the internet person for Anthem is Luke, right? Like, there's always somebody who, and I'm not saying that to, like, make fun of you. I'm saying there's always somebody that that game is going to resonate with, for right? Sure. And um, I don't I don't know. I've seen a lot of people who've played the alpha say, I really love the production and the cutscenes. I really like what they're going for. Um, the gameplay's fine, mm. but not good enough to really make me want to come back to it. I've also heard people say the gameplay is a ton of fun and the traversal is great. Mm. So like I really don't know. I've heard both of those too. But the thing, yeah, like it's always it's like it's a hit or some, miss. It's there's something here and the something is different. Yeah. But it's like there's something here, but I think like, not yet. Like, I think Rocksteady's a good enough developer. There's gonna be some things that hit, right? Like they've done a good, they have a good enough track record. They're gonna hit some things that really work for people. Yeah. But the thing that was the most interesting to me that nobody's talking about is they announced their roadmap, and it's all free. Oh. So there was all this like buzz about battle passes and all this stuff, and like those could still be there, but their roadmap was all free stuff characters interesting episodes playable locations all that stuff was free dlc like it said free on it yeah they announced it as a free dlc maybe one of those things where was that at the, this uh, point for deluxe the, edition for the game you know for the kind of the game and how the systems are built they have it's all too tied into something like a battle pass to to rip it out but what they can do is offer a bunch of free stuff to try and entice people to come in and play and then oh maybe you're playing enough that you want to buy the battle pass i don't know i don't know it's an interesting destiny has lots of free stuff free seasonal content lots of trashy free stuff i mean a raid so here's the free seasonal content for some good free stuff for quote-unquote season one new boss fights plus enemy variant variants new playable character new riddler content new activities plus strongholds two episodes new dc villain themed weapons and gear new playable environment called the daily cackle which is like the joker's place um and and more and then future seasons two through four three new playable characters three new playable environments weapons themed gear sets activities and mid-season updates um just it only requires the base game so that's all the stuff that's free so i'm assuming battle pass if they sell one for this is going to be see like here's the first thing somebody comments do we need to buy the deluxe edition to get the free seasonal content? 
Like, yeah. Um, but it just says requires base game. So my guess would be no. Um, so I'm assuming battle pass is all just going to be cosmetics and you don't have to buy it. I don't know. And this game comes out in what? Like a month? Isn't it? No, April? it's, it's next Friday. What the? It's February 2nd. February. Woo. So the, today was their last, like, Hey, here's the last news dump before it releases. Yeah. Are you going to get it? No, <laughs> probably not right away. I bought hell divers too. Just I'll wait for that. it to be on Game Pass. That or <laughs> on like a super deep discount for like 15 bucks. And yeah. I'll be like, okay, yeah. I'll check it out. I'll do it finally. I bought Gotham Knights. And honestly, Gotham Knights looks a lot better after seeing gameplay from this. <laughs> so, um, no, I had a lot of fun with Gotham Knights. Maybe when this goes on a deep sale, I'll check it out. Yeah. But I am not a day one player of this. Well, kind of- I do really look forward to hearing like the reactions from the yeah. whole yeah. game. Not just an alpha build. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm not getting it either. I do think it's an interesting choice to, to have Joker be your first DLC character. Did you see the design for him? Yeah. It's so bad. They say he's from an else world is how everybody's Well, Joker's it. dead in the Arkhamverse. Yeah. So this one came <laughs> from stupid. a different world where he's a part of a different Suicide Squad or something. I don't know. Oh, bizarre. It's the Suicide Squad. You have so many great characters. Joker would not be on this team. <laughs> I like just from a world story DC perspective. There, you lost me. Yeah. Even in David Ayer's Suicide Squad, Joker was in the movie. He wasn't on the team. Right. At least they got that right. I Dang. think, like, I try to think of Suicide Squad characters you could have done. You could have done Bronze Tiger. You could have done Black Polka Manta. Dot Man. Black Manta. Black Manta would look great in the Arkhamverse. Yeah. Um. Who else? You could do Condiment King. Like, do something stupid and <laughs> Dude, goofy. that would be so awesome. Like, there's so many goofy characters that would fit within kind of what they're doing, like, visually, in the team, and their goofiness. Like, I don't know, man. <laughs> it just feels, it just Captain feels Cold weird. DC, uh, Perfect. Dude, JT Captain says. Cold, great, Perfect. great pull, JT. I love that. Perfect choice. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I'll wait for this to go on a sale. If it can get to, like, a 50% off. I might check it out. Nice. But I'm a sucker for DC stuff, man. Glutton for punishment, all of it. True. True. So, um, and well, then my, oh, my gaming adjacent. Mortal Kombat 2 has wrapped filming. Oh. The they released a little still nice. of um, Johnny Cage's belt buckle. Oh. Okay, cool. Well, also gaming adjacent slash movie. Also DC. Um until dawn the pc or the playstation game yeah. is getting a a movie remake a, a movie made about it yep. um and david sandberg yep. is mm-hmm. tied to direct he did so. say he wanted to get back to horror so i think it's a great i'm happy for him that's great yeah great pick happy for him that's awesome is that a good game uh i have it because i got it for free on playstation but i never played it i think it has um it has rami malik and captain eyebrows what's his name Played Adam Warlock. Holy cow! What is his name? Oh, uh, d- shoot! Captain um, Captain Eyebrows is his name. We're calling him Captain Eyebrows. <laughs> I don't on. remember the name either. <laughs> I'll just look it up. So, we but know. no, this is cool. Yeah, I think I think we're seeing a lot of good adaptations here lately, and the, these games are the story. Will Poulter. Will Will Poulter. Poulter. That's his yeah. name. That guy. Um, yeah, these games are story driven. You just make choices. There's not a whole lot of quote Hayden, unquote gameplay. Hayden Pantier? Yeah. Um, Are they all going to. Is, is Will Poulter in it? Or I don't think. Wrong? He's in one of their games. Um, I don't Maybe see not. it. Okay. Mm, yeah, I know he's done a game like this. Um, so oh, he, was he in the quarry? He might have been in the quarry. Mm. Is it that type of game? It's that kind of game, yeah. So this is built for being a movie. I mean, it's yeah. a cinematic game anyways. That's the whole point of this. We'll, we'll see Amber game play the scares. game, and then we're like, whatever decisions he makes is the <laughs> <series. laughs> Dude, that'd be sick. I did see some people talking about, they're like, they need to make six different endings for this and just distribute them all out to different oh theaters. Gosh. That'd be so cool. That would be amazing. They don't do that anymore. Distribute no. them all and just make It'd them be different It'd so easy because they're, it's all digital. Yeah. 
Just make it different show times, di- di- have different dig- endings. Digital yeah. distribution. That'd be awesome. That'd be really fun. But do a Sandberg. Um, we also got news that David Kip is yeah. working on a new Jurassic World script. Um, this is the guy who wrote the first the screenplays for the first two Jurassic Park movies, not Jurassic World, the Jurassic Park movies, the Jurassic Park and the Lost World Jurassic Park. Um, the best ones. I mean, yeah. I man, I love both those movies. Obviously, I love the first one, but the second one underrated. It's great. Um, I'm more interested in this than I expected to be. I guess probably because of who's attached writing it. I mean, you're a Jurassic Park fan too. You kind of just can't help it, I'd assume. Yeah, but if like if they were like, ah, Colin Trevorrow's coming back and he's doing another Jurassic World movie, I'd be like, mm. but I think also. But do we need it? I think the thing too that you know makes it enticing or encouraging is that none of the original or none of the original cast or the previous cast are coming back at this point at this point yeah i'm curious if it will be till margaret like a... research says ah but it would be good to have alan grant on the poster <laughs> i'm curious if it will be like a reboot or a continuation i th- i think because they've said and this is not confirmed, obviously. A new era was the phrase. Well, no, no. It since it's still it's Jurassic World. Yeah. It's a new Jurassic World movie. I don't think it's going to be a reboot. I think it's going to be a continuation. Or just a story in the same space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it doesn't. I just. I would. I need you a... and I know you all both. You both know my Jurassic World movie pitch. And so I'm. I don't remember it. Very excited <laughs> for stories that kind of just take place in the world i hope it, it's your pitch but then I, again i don't, I don't. like because i i want you to be able to pitch it <laughs> i need to i need to cook that a little more than pitch it because your pitch for that is great i i like i think the, it the i think it's the yeah yeah <laughs> oh whoa that's that's going like it's too early days that's this podcast it's been some like time been since forever. we discussed it's it it's yeah. been a while yeah for sure we've made like three short films since then like <laughs> Get another one cook in. Yeah. yeah. Let him cook. Cool, cool. So, I uh, need to know what happened to that freaking deer that got pimp slapped. Oh, dude. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Make it like a... Let me know what happened. <coughs> Weird. Is it okay? Did it get eaten? I know it started chasing Bryce Dallas Howard for a little bit. My, uh, my last movie story, and kind of in film here, uh, is that John Boyega is apparently on uh to star in the book of eli prequel series it's a series it's a series i didn't see that it was a series somewhat less interested now actually i think it's awesome who do we know who's writing it i'm gonna guess if it's not, not Witta. gary witta <laughs> if it's not witta <laughs> although he has been teasing something oh because he said he's pitching something that's pretty high level. He did. He did. He, see, and he, I did and hear something he said it sounded that. like it was going really well. Yeah, fingers he's crossed. on the X cast, so he sometimes talks about it. Yeah. Um, anyways, I, I think that's a good choice. Um, I think it's a good choice. There's but a, how there's is a, it not John David there's Washington? There's a better one. <laughs> it is. John David Washington is a better choice. For I, sure. I'd be wondering if they, if Maybe. he would have said no. But like, I, don't wanna, was, I don't want to play the same role. If it was a movies, if it was a film, I wonder if he says yes. I think he's yeah, because I mean he got his start on Ballers, and I think he's maybe just not down to do a TV thing right now. Because he's, I mean, he's a budding star. Original book of Eli Ryder and co-writer of Rogue One: A Star Wars Story, Garrett Wood is allegedly back on the project. Let's allegedly. go! Hold on, no, no. allegedly alongside the Hughes brother Albert and Alan Hughes as executive producers. Dude, I hope he's back okay. on it. That's really cool. That that it's been reignites a minute. little hope. It's been a minute for it him, has. so I really hope it it is what he's back on so. this was the uh the first r-rated movie i saw in theaters whoa dude i love this movie it's a great movie <laughs> yeah it's an awesome movie it's, <laughs> it's fantastic. so good so good blew my mind dude i had no idea the twist was coming it's just like oh yeah <laughs> yeah i i love that i movie. might have to watch it i was gonna week. say i might have to watch it again <laughs> here soon but john boyega honestly great it's choice. An inspired choice yes yeah awesome love boyega yeah yeah yeah, if you can't get John David Washington to play his dad, this is it's one in one A. Yep. Right? Like for sure. And you could make them interchangeable in my mind. So um sick. You have anything else? I have two more stories. Invincible. Yeah. Season two, part two coming March fourteen. Yep. So now I know when I need to start watching part one. 
March 13th. <laughs> Correct, because it's only four episodes. <laughs> so fast. Yep. So, February 28th. So you can watch one... Two a week or something like that? Like one a week. Yeah. You're busy. Yeah. Sure. You're, like, you're not uh, going to binge But with, it, with Invincible, I, I would... They're only 30 minutes. Yeah, they are They are short episodes. They're only 30 minutes this season? I think so. Season one, they were like well, the they're, 48 I guess 15. it's more sporadic. It'd be like 30, then it's 48, then it's 10, then it's an hour and a half. It's like, okay. Like, yeah. it's, there's no, There aren't any that are 10, but it's all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> I have one one more news story. Exaggeration adds effect. Oh, hyperbole. Yeah, it's Go ahead, Tyler. Uh, Code 8, part 2, releasing February 28th. Oh, we did get a release date for that. Sweet. Yeah, and uh, nice. I for the sake of not... For not giving bad information, uh, Stephen Mill did say a trailer would be out either next week or next month, which are one and the same. So I'm not really sure. Um, but he did say, you know, so you could say coming, next month. And yeah. It's so like, we're, hey, we're <laughs> coming out. Soon. We're coming out exactly. Like, <laughs> we're, you know, movie comes out next month, so it's only right that a trailer comes here pretty quick. So awesome. Um, really looking forward to this. I think like yeah. this is one of the like one of my quietly anticipated movies. Mm-hmm. I really like the first one. Um, you seen the first one? Uh, yeah, Stephanie and I watched it uh, pretty couple, recently, right? A couple weeks ago. Yeah, it's it's yeah, really good. Yeah, and surprisingly it, good. It's for like a five dollar budget. budget yeah. It was yeah, <laughs> and it's like you you hear about it, you're like oh, I've seen this before, and then it starts and you're like, actually, this is pretty freaking <laughs> sweet. Like it's it's awesome, man. Now if I can just get my sequel to push, yeah, <laughs> oh, we're cooking, baby, dude. We talked about Code Eight as a series, like telling more stories in that world too would be really cool. Dude, can um, we do a, a short in the pu- an, in the push like universe? I feel like game. Where will the rights be? Maybe Chris Evans has them. Yeah, just, can we just get just Chris be, Evans? Yeah, it's just like, be hey, big enough. Want to want to come be in our little short film? He'd be like, bro, I've been wanting to make a sequel to that for so long. Let's do it. <laughs> it's literally my favorite movie. Ever. He's like, I will bankroll it. Let's go. <laughs> it's my favorite movie ever, but I didn't want to say anything because <laughs> yeah. it didn't do well. And that's all I have. Luke, any news over there? Uh, Terminalist Dark Wolf. Um, it's a prequel to the Chris Pratt military series on Amazon Prime. I've heard um, great things about this show. Dude, you need to watch it. It's honestly, it kind of feels like Reacher. It's a dad show? It, it's a dad it's a, show. It, I mean, yeah. Or as Alan Richardson would say, a family show. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. It's it's the best performance you'll see from Chris Pratt. Well, and you, you watch, you're just like, this is the funny guy. <laughs> yeah. Where's yeah. this guy been? Dude, he's ruthless in that show. And, oh, So it's hyper violent? Job. It's very violent. Oh, I'm in. There's some kills in it. We're just like, oh. Dana won't watch it, but I will. <clears throat> I'm in. Great stuff. And yeah, this is a prequel with Chris Pratt and Taylor Kitch. Sweet. Um, what really has Taylor Kitsch been doing lately? I feel like he was hot uh, for a bit. In... Terminalist. <laughs> and that's, that's it. True. John Carter and the Terminalist. He was hot for a bit, and then he just kind of disappeared. Yeah. Well, John Carter bombed. Bombed. <laughs> bombed Which made no hard. sense, because that movie was awesome. It was awesome. I've never seen it. It was awesome. It was something. It was awesome. Give it a rewatch. It's a lot of fun. Okay, it's not awesome. It's a lot of fun. You guys should wrestle. <laughs> it's up. really cool. You guys should wrestle it out. A euphemism? Yes. <laughs> uh, moving on to the fan box. <laughs> <laughs> we do have uh, we have quite a few questions this week. Oh boy! So, oh, yeah. um, our first one is from Easton. Hey, Easton asks if you could soul swap with a single actor or director and live have lived their life, or if they're currently alive, like continue the rest of their career, who would it be? Say that again? If you could soul swap with an actor or director, who would it be? And, like, live their life. Soul? Oh. Soul swap. Like, trade lives? I don't know. We're doing a Freaky Friday thing. I don't know. That's a weird question. Don't get too caught up on the soul swap thing. Just actor, director, you would like to be for a time. Uh... That's hard. Uh, hmm, man. I think I have an answer. Ooh, what is it? And I don't think it's one people would normally pick. But the dude is so genuinely cool. I kind of have two. 
and they're pretty similar. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, hold on. We'll make sure I get okay. Yeah, Rowan Atkinson. <laughs> <laughs> Great pick. Like genuinely love one that. of the funniest guys. I love that pick. Um. He wasn't a huge movie star, but like the stuff I always see him in, he's hilarious. Seems like an awesome guy. He got to play keyboard at the London Olympics. He stole the opening ceremony by just do, 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 do. <laughs> like. I, I think that'd be a great choice. Yeah. And then my follow up, if somebody happened to be soul swapping at the same time and they stole that one, and I think it'd be Don Knotts. Oh. I think he had a interesting career too that i think would be a lot of fun yeah mine's kind of lame (laughs) um but mostly because i don't feel like obviously this person's way more successful than me sure obviously so like any of these are probably so what i'm about to say like don't take it the wrong way i'm already taking but my life wouldn't be that different oh if i swapped with ryan coogler look at this guy college football player got started dabbling in film just because his friends did it and he thought it was cool and he watched movies <laughs> with his parents got his first movie for like a million dollar budget which obviously i've not done but like no, 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 but, but, you but think of the trajectory that's next, that's next. You, you think of the trajectory right <laughs> like he had made some shorts then he got fruitvale station yeah yeah then he made creed then he made black panther and so, like, he's just had this really gradual climb of a career, which I think is just the healthiest way to do it. Yeah. Um, I also really liked hearing him chat on the De- the Team Deacons podcast. And just kind of hearing him talk about his journey and how, like, the lens that he views film and story through mm-hmm. is just very... It's very human, right? Yeah. Like, I don't feel like I'm an idiot when I listen to him talk. Like, there's some people who go on that show and they start talking and I'm like, wow, I am just so dumb, <laughs> right? And, like, with him, I don't feel that way. Yeah. And I, like, yeah. But I think it's because he has a way of bringing film to meet people where they are mm-hmm. and make it personal Yeah. in a way that not, like, some guys do. When, yeah. when they talk about it, I mean. Mm-hmm. Like, they obviously can get their films to people and audiences because they wouldn't be successful directors if they couldn't. But... Right. I don't know. I just feel like he's one of the more human guys in Hollywood. Oh. And, and I think that's cool. Um, I'm going to throw out Bill Hader. Ooh. Also a good choice. Ooh. I th- his episode's great, too. His episode, <laughs> on, yeah, his Auntie Biggs is great, too. But also just a guy the, with no real training. <laughs> just right, kind of winging it. Just kind of winging it. But he has such a wide breadth of experience from yes. SNL to act, you know, to an act, an acting, so TV acting. Like live TV acting, TV acting, moving into directing. Yeah. Um, I just think all of those experiences are really cool. So. Yeah. That's what I was trying to think about. And we're gonna find out this week. All these people that are horrible people. Right. (laughs) (laughs) We said it before we knew. As an actor, I don't know. That's that's a lot harder. That's okay. It was actor or director. So you answered. I went with director. Ryan Coogler. Great. Perfect. Oh, um, there was an announcement from him this week too. Him and Michael B. Jordan are making some movie. They are doing some oh, secret right. genre project. Yeah, vampire movie. What? Vampire movie. Really? Mm-hmm. That's what I kept seeing. I didn't see that, but I who's, also didn't look. I didn't look that deep into it. Who's so. directing the sequel to I Am Legend? Oh, is it Coogler now? <laughs> Michael B. Jordan vampire movie. Ryan Coogler. Maybe it is. Maybe it's the I Am Legend. Dude, look. Sure. If it's I Am Legend, awesome. Dude, Why not? If it's a vampire movie, a lot less exciting. <laughs> I, I think Coogler, Still could be cool. I think Coogler will find a way cool. to make it Still cool. Still could be yeah. cool. But I have to let my excitement build. For Dude, that. if he does a vampire... If Michael B. Jordan does a vampire movie and then has the rights to fourth wing for Amazon, it's like, bro, what are we doing? Mm. Where are we going here? Where are we? <laughs> Michael B. Jordan has fourth wing rights? Yeah, yeah, this production company does with Amazon. Super weird. It's funny. I all I do is hear you guys complain about how dumb that. <laughs> <laughs> we we've also said I don't know if we've ever said it on air. It has it, potential. It has potential there's, as a film. There's potential, yeah, for yeah, sure. But it's a show. Uh, Daniel, over on Twitter, 
asks, what video game from the early 2000s would you like to have played with today's graphics? Ooh. Um, Any Zelda Tyler game? said his from <laughs> earlier, I'm sure. You no. were just talking about how no. excited you were for Gears to be made in Unreal 5. That'll be sick, but no. <laughs> and it might happen this year. Yeah, yeah. NCAA football. Oh. Is it, is it only the thousands? We can't go even further? Two, yeah, 2000 to 2010. Honestly, honestly, my answer is every Zelda game. Mm. Yeah. Like, so, so a Zelda game from... Because Ocarina of Time, you know, 1997, I think. Yeah. And, mm. like, can mm-hmm. I get away from the trigonometry blocking <laughs> of all those games and just get, like, a super sweet-looking Zelda game? Mm-hmm. Here's here's one to not be a loser and cop out with a sports game that gets year, yearly releases. Turok. Oh. Yeah. I would love to play Turok with today's graphics. I can get behind that. Love I've it. always thought those games were cool. It's weird because my, you know, my initial go tos are like the Halo games, right? Yeah. And Halo One already had a remaster, and Ooh, like, it, I mean, it was a ten years ago remaster type of thing, so it doesn't even look great now. It, it looks good. Halo Combat Evolved remastered, um, remastered, and Halo Two got the same treatment, and then That's Halo an awesome Three. Cinematics. Here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say... Oh, when did it come out? Halo Reach? ODST. When did ODST like come 09, out? 08? I think it was 0908. I think it falls within the... the most underrated Halo frame. game? Absolutely. That kind of like super dark noir, playing that in like HDR, I think would be dope. The yeah. second best Halo soundtrack game? Yeah. Yeah. I'll go with ODST. Absolutely. So... Here's another one that I think should come back, or I would love to come back. Here's one. Sony's concerned about losing Call of Duty. Bring back SOCOM. Mm. Give SOCOM the the new game treatment and bring it back. They you, had you a, want to compete with Call of Duty? SOCOM had it. They had a they had a game that came out with the PS3 in like 2008 or something like that. Resistance? Fall of Man, I think. It was mm-hmm. about aliens invading London, maybe? Yeah. Um, I had a, 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 a college dorm mate who had it. Was it was like four hours long. And it, yeah. yeah. But it like, it looked cool. Yeah. And I'm like, that would probably look super dope now. I don't know if it was a good, I don't know if it was actually a good game or not. Medal of Honor. <laughs> we sports, baby. <laughs> my serious, my serious answer is Bloodborne. <laughs> Dude, everybody wants Bloodborne. What'd you say? Would you laugh at? Wii oh, sports? I just pointed at Call of Duty 4 Modern oh, Warfare. That's already which happened. Happened. <laughs> yeah. Charles Colossus had a remake. Guitar Hero. <laughs> I'm just I'm on a list from the Guardian of the 15 greatest video games of the 2000s. Oh. Ranked. Mm. Actually, yeah. I think a new Guitar Hero or Rock Band game would be super cool. It's gonna be in Fortnite, bro. Elder Scrolls Four. We'll get that in with Elder Scrolls Six. Yep. Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask came out 2000. Awesome game. Bioshock. Bioshock. Got Ooh. A, it's gotten a remaster though. Oh, it has. Yeah. Bioshock Collection. How about just a sequel? Metal Gear Solid Ooh. is about to come out. When did Infinite come out? Bioshock, Bioshock Infinite? Infinite? Uh, I don't know. 2011? Yeah. I, I mean, the I think any of the Bioshocks with 2020 graphics would be amazing. Yeah. 2013. Yeah. Oof. But, okay. Uh, we have a couple. We have, we're going to do one more question. Uh, this one's from Zach Lopes. Yo. And uh, doesn't he have multiple questions? He does. So I'm going to save some for next week. Okay. Uh, the question we're going to answer today is biggest Disney villain. And I asked for clarification <laughs> and he said, it's up to your interpretation. So who is the biggest Disney villain <laughs> and why? <laughs> I feel like, Oh man. Ego the planet. Ego the planet. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess if you're going sheer Just size. Straight up yeah. size. Star killer base. Does that count as a villain? <laughs> <laughs> um I'm going to assume this is like traditional villains. Like the old school stuff. Yeah, however you want to interpret it. Look, my choice is um the one the, when I think of Disney villain. The first one that comes to mind is Jafar. 
I, could, I think of Maleficent. Maleficent's a great one. Yeah. It's the, like, at the end of the movie, the, it's a character that transforms into something yeah. huge. Whether it's Maleficent with the dragon, or it's Jafar becoming the, like, massive Giant. genie. Yeah. And, like, he's like, ah! Yep. So... Maybe and we're taking those... that a little too literally, but like both, of the, I think both of those characters are. I think you could, evil and I think iconic. you could put it either way, right? Yeah. Like. Yeah. Either size or just. JT s- says Hades from uh, Hercules. Hercules. Great one. Good one. Yeah. When I think of just iconic. And ones that honestly, as a kid, kind of freaked me out. The evil queen from Snow White. But as the old hag. As the yeah. witch, yeah. Or the hag. Legitimately was freaky looking. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. Um, the Mountain King from Fantasia. I don't think that's technically a villain. Yeah, but, but still, yeah. Like, all of a sudden this mountain turns into this giant gargoyle dragon to this... And there's this demon music. Hey. And mm-hmm. it's just yeah. like, am I allowed to watch this? <laughs> yeah, we tried um, uh, The Little Mermaid with Bryn this weekend and... And Ursula scared her. The Little Mermaid, deceptively scary. Yeah. Claire would not watch that for years. Yeah, Bryn, Bryn, we got to like the Ursula bit. The first time you see Ursula and she was like, Dad, I don't want to watch this anymore. And I was like, okay. <laughs> okay. It's fine. Most, we'll turn on most, Encanto. Uh, it's fine. Most evil, Cruella. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Um, underrated, The Shadow man from princess and the frog oh uh facilier yes yeah yeah super underrated yeah i can get behind that yeah i like that is it dr facilier or mr facilier because i know it's french because it's there's it's new orleans Orleans. so like i know it's facilier doctor Doc. Yeah, because he's a voodoo doctor, isn't yeah. he? Doctor Facilier. Yeah. Are you ready? <laughs> da, 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 da. Yeah. Oof. Good. Good choices. Good choices. All um, Darth Vader. Darth. Yeah. <laughs> Not originally a Disney villain. A uh, grand- but, grandfather. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um. Any white football coach from all the Disney sports movies. <laughs> <laughs> No, <laughs> you're not wrong. Um, Let's just Google some Disney villains. Radigan is one. Oh, Radigan's great. Ooh, Queen of Hearts is a good Captain one. Hook. Co- Captain Co- Hook. Co- yeah, Captain Hook. Um, I think it's Oogie Boogie. Oogie Boogie's from how? Uh, night is that? Oh, Nightmare, Nightmare Before, Before Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. Never seen it. Want to know why? Um, Stop motion. Davy Jones. Oh, from the Pirates. Frollo. I liked him. From Hunchback of Notre Dame. Oh, mm, that's yeah. That's a good one. That's that a is good, a great one. That's a good poll. Now we're just talking good Disney villains. Right. Dude, honestly, lots of great villains. Yeah. What happened, Disney? What happened? Now you're... I was listening to... Uh, so... If you've been following along, I started playing Disney Lurkana, the trading card yeah, game, yeah, and yeah. I was listening to a podcast. They were talking about villains and specifically, and they were doing like a Disney Jeopardy. And the question was, who is the one Disney villain to sing a song with a princess? Hans. Yep. And like the people, they were Mother like Mother Gothel. Is she like strictly featured in the song though? Like, is it because Hans is like it's a back and forth duet? Oh. She gets to sing. It's part of the same song. song, but she's in a different area, right? She sings the... She's a guest on the You Can't Leave the Tower song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Hans but, is like... Yeah, it's like a, tr- a, str- a true... It's like a romantic duet. song. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But it was so funny because like, this dude was like naming all these classic movies, and he's like, is it this one? No, it's not that one. Oh, like, th- here, the Mountain King is right here. Chernabog. It's his name. Bog. What the heck? Okay. Cool. 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 Uh, real quick, I guess before we go on, I do want to. I do want to bring up, um, what the fanboy as a podcast is not generally considered a helpline, but we did have uh someone 
tweet at us. Um, Hi, fanboys. Uh, Long-time caller, first-time listener. Sorry for using a throwaway to ask my question, but I prefer to remain anonymous for this. I have a friend. Let's call him Ty. Ty Rever. There's a particular movie that Ty Rever really enjoys. In fact, he logged it on Letterboxd eight times in 2023. I know who this is. Um... I finally got around to watching it, and it's the most vile, disgusting, insane movie I've ever seen. I now find myself worrying about Ty Rever's well-being. Am I wrong for being concerned? How do I approach Ty Rever while remaining as respectful and not set, remaining respectful and not setting him off? Thanks in advance. I figured three guys with unique tastes uh, are better qualified to help than anyone. So, do you have any advice for our anonymous? What movie was logged eight times? A vile and disgusting movie, apparently. Okay. Um. So. That was a long question. It was a very long question. How do you guys hear about... How, how about this? How do you guys... We, we can have fun with this. We can. I, do, I think it's a little bit of a joke, because I know the people involved. But at the same time, I think it's a good opportunity to talk about how do you go about, um, you know engaging with people who like things that you don't you lost me at engaging engaging with people okay well luke just goes oh and okay okay room. okay i do okay <laughs> so i guess it? like i mean what, what what are you hoping to accomplish by engaging with them hey don't watch this movie you like like i don't know does it hurt you that they like that movie i don't know I don't know, man. Like, I lots watch. I watch lots of vile and disgusting movies and TV shows that my mom would not like. I feel like <laughs> I don't know. If it's a movie that they're watching and it makes you concerned for their well being, then you tell them that. Hmm. But like, it's a it's a movie. It's a movie, and and there may be aspects to that movie that are genuinely enjoyable, even though there there might be stuff in there that you disagree with or you think is. <laughs> gross or like so, are they only only watching the movie martyrs or something <laughs> so easton commented and goes the answer is if the movie is babylon you, you just respect them less <laughs> <laughs> so it's easton's burner it's, uh, account yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's trevor <laughs> that he's concerned about and the movie's babylon <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 i got gotcha. you here's my advice tell him he here's my advice his movie. <laughs> and it's bad advice just make fun of them. <laughs> Just make fun of them. Make, it, we make fun of each other all the time because it is. he likes The Last Jedi. And you because guys... I, ouch! And you, oh, and you, you guys oh, like the Fast and Furious movies. This is true. And yeah. so but there's two just, of us and one of you. I know. So shut up. Here, here is the foundation <laughs> of everything. People have really bad taste across the board. Somebody has bad taste in something. <laughs> just make fun of him. It's not me, but I agree with this anonymous person. <laughs> Is it Baroque then? <laughs> it's some combination of you three. How many how many exclamation points did he use? That uh, three. Oh, okay, he's lying. It's in. It's no. him. <laughs> <laughs> Easton goes. Luke also has a good answer. <laughs> just make fun of him. If they're your friend, you can just make fun of him. Uh, that's it. If it's a, a person on the yeah. internet, just ignore him. Just yeah, just ignore. Him. I, I mean, this is a friend, right? So yeah. I was gonna say maybe you could just make fun of them too, but yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> don't go down the, that route. We we don't uh, just post a gif of cyberbully. <laughs> just post the gif of somebody going. I've still not seen that movie. Babylon? Yeah. Neither. I heard it was bad, so I never watched it. <laughs> I don't. You watched it. I did watch it. I, you did not give it a glowing review. I did not so give I, it a glowing review. No, it's. I think. I think it's, you were uh, like, it's fine. <laughs> it's. It's a movie. Look, it does all of what Damien Chazelle does really well, and then so much more that's unnecessary. Would you rather watch Babylon or Saltburn? I haven't seen Saltburn yet, so Saltburn. Hmm. But even after, probably still Saltburn. I mean, I, I don't know. I'd rather watch all the Fast and Furious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, you don't give Always me a great you don't choice. give me the Last Jedi as an option. Rude. I made my own option. Okay, well... <laughs> you can watch The Last Jedi Thank again. you for all of the questions this week. Uh, we'll have a couple more next week. I saved some of Zach Lopes. 
Appreciate you, Zach. Um, real quick, let's do our weekly wrap up. What'd you guys do this week? Anything to report back on? Played more Super Mario Wonder. That game is awesome. Highly, highly recommend. Let's go. And much to some some friends, listeners, uh, you know, incessant asking. I've started The Last of Us too. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, That's a great game. Yeah, I I've I've kind of texted Luke and Easton um, about it. And kind of just, you know, I remember when this game came out, there was so much outrage. Um, and I just want to say I've reached the, the first point of where outrage began. Um, and I want to say that if you were outraged, you're wrong. I think it's a great decision. I think it's a great decision. And I think if you were paying attention, it, it's the right decision hmm. from a, from a narrative standpoint. So, um, I love it. I think it's awesome. I'm emotional when I think about playing it. Um, but I will say it's been really cool playing it when it's been super cold lately, mm. <laughs> like, especially the beginning. Cause it's winter. Yeah. yeah. It just makes it more immersive, but no, it's awesome. You open the window a little bit. And let no, <laughs> I just don't use my space heater in the basement. Uh. The thing is crazy that game you start it and the thing happens and then like just for the rest of the twenty hour game you kind of just cry. Yeah, like turn was, on the PS Five you're just like. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of like kind of a mess there for a bit and so I texted you and Easton this I was like yeah so I got up like I woke up too late to go to the gym so I was like well what do I want to do I guess I'll go boot up Last of Us because I wasn't sure I'd get to play it again this week and uh, got to a big story beat. And I was just like, ooh, now I gotta go to work. I don't, don't want to go to work. <laughs> like, I was just not doing well. Uh, hey, boss, I can't come in today. No, I'm not sick. I just played the opening the last two. <laughs> yeah, I figured you'd understand. Me. <laughs> Mental health day. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, I mean, it's it's great. I don't think it needed a remake, remaster, whatever this thing that came out last week is. Oh. Not necessary. Oh, not necessary. It's beautiful. At least they... Added some stuff. Added some stuff, but also it's just like a small upgrade if you already own it. Yeah. If they would have just been like another seventy dollars. Did you I hear no that way. was a news story we didn't cover? So if you owned it digitally, like the PS4 version digitally, and mm -hmm. you paid full price for the part two remaster or whatever, they were refunding people for their PS4 purchase. Oh, so cool. that's kind of cool. All right. So good on them. Yeah. Sorry. Nice. That's all I did. Cool. Luke? Um, I finished Reacher Season 2. It's a great show. I will finish that Wednesday night. I'm so excited. Um, I don't know if I give it a Booyah or Fanboy Worthy, but I think lots of people will like it. Nice. I need to digest. I finished it today. Mm, okay. I need to digest the quality a little bit, but it was, it's really good. Yeah. So We finished Episode 6 last night, and I was like, Watching Alice, Allison, Alan Richardson run in that show was so funny. <laughs> it's just this giant. He's just so man. big. And they joke about it in the show too. Like Deacon's just like, I'm gonna cover you while you're running. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> like, but yeah, fantastic show. Sweet. And season three was already greenlit, so we'll get more. Nice. Which I love. Anything else? Nope. Okay. Uh, I watched Self Reliance uh, on Hulu. Ooh. This is the Jake Johnson. Dana he's, watched this too. He's uh, in New Girl. Um, he directed he's Spider Man, bro. And, he, and he's Spider Man. He's Peter Parker. Yeah. Peter B. Parker. Peter, Peter B. B. Parker. Parker. My mistake. Uh, yeah. Um, I think this is actually pretty good. Um, I it's I give it a Matthew McConaughey. Um, I think it's really strong in the first two acts, and then it. Kind of like uh, my in my review of um, uh, the mo the Netflix movie about the end of the world. Uh, uh, yeah, it it just kind of ends. Yeah, gave Dana gave behind. it a Dana gave it a one and a half. She was like, "The end sucks so bad." <laughs> I was like, "Okay." <laughs> what is this on? Hulu. I've never even heard of this, but I guess I don't have Hulu right now. So. Mm. Uh, yeah. So it's, but I but I, again, like the first two acts, I think are really. 
enjoyable. I think there's good chemistry between him and Anna Kendrick. Um, it, I think it's got good jokes. It, it just kind of fizzles at the, at the end. Um, so, you know, maybe, I mean, I, I said, Matthew McConaughey, but you know, maybe realistically, like a straight to streaming is probably it, it is where it is, right? This is a movie that would not come out theatrically. I'm I'm not surprised it didn't. Um, living on streaming makes sense for it. So sweet, but I had I had some fun with it. Yeah, Dana just hate hated it. the end of it. Yeah, she's like it was fine up That's until fair. then. But uh, the other thing I've been doing, I haven't finished yet, so I'll, I'll hopefully be able to give you a full review next week. Is I started Scavengers Reign on Max. This is an animated show. Um, about a group of people who get stranded on an alien world. And it is the most alien Scavengers world. Scavengers Reign? Yeah. Sorry, I was not listening because I was reading something, but I was I was going to start that soon. It's fantastic. Yeah. It is... Uh, I, don't, I don't know... It's a version of sci-fi that I've just not known I've been missing in my life. The animation looks awesome. It's beautiful. The world is bizarre just from the trailer i was just like weird (laughs) like you like yeah (laughs) and uh and it's got a pretty interesting little storyline so i'm about halfway through it now um and i'm having a lot a lot of fun with it but it is it's kind of lo-fi like the vibe is like lo-fi beats sci-fi okay it's it's very quiet and slow and it takes its time and it has its moments of action and stuff um but it's never overwhelming and it's always kind of just okay and then we're back to this is such a bigger world and ecosystem than us and what we're doing here these people who crash landed Mm -hmm. and that survival and so like after whatever in that episode kind of happens it's always this nice reflective it seems to be this okay the world keeps moving and it doesn't revolve around us and I think that we miss that a lot of times in, you know, very character-driven shows that are yeah. about the characters. And this is feels less about the characters and more about the world and them just surviving in it. Very cool. Um, so I'm definitely enjoying that. Wanted to throw it out there. Sweet. So. Is that it? I have a little last nugget. Yeah. A little news nugget here. Ooh. Um David Fincher says they went as far as they could with Mindhunter until they were told it makes no sense to produce this series unless you can reduce the budget or make it more pop. Make it pop more. I think they... More pop, like pop fiction or pop culture. Pop culture. Make it more pop. Okay, yeah. Make it, yeah. We did not... Make more popular, broader, probably. Broader yeah. audience. Broader audience, yeah. yeah. We did not want to change our approach, so respectfully, they told us that they were drawing a line under it. Boo. Boo, Netflix. Yeah. <sighs> or you could just trust your, trust your filmmakers. And what has the audience of that show been doing for the past three years? Begging for another season. Yep. I, I wish they could do something that is... Because how many episodes are those seasons? Are they ten? Ten. They're full ten. Cut it to six. Cut or it something. to cut it to five or six. Yeah, and and Just I think you could stretch your budget out a little bit. Stretch your budget exactly. Yeah. you can tell that story still. I think, um, and it will just feel maybe like the third season would feel a little more limited series esque, but that's okay. I think that's better. Personally, I'd want that over nothing. Yeah, that's maybe selfish of me. I mm-hmm. I know. Um, I'm just so curious, like. Because Netflix never releases numbers, yeah, all you can base anything on is looking at their top ten on their website. Mm-hmm. Like, how many people actually watched? And how does that compare to something like The Crown? But The Crown wins six Emmys every year. Yeah, I don't think Mindhunter really won any because it was going against The Crown. <laughs> Now the crown's done. It's Mindhunter's turn. It's Mindhunter's turn. It is. It is. <laughs> what is Netflix's big? <coughs> hey, look Stranger at us things. show now. Because well, they're still was, working was... with Fincher too. Yeah. Because they just did the killer or whatever. Yeah. yeah that's true. It, it was House of Cards. Yeah. Then it was Orange Is the New Black. Then it was The Crown. Now it's Mindhunter. Let's go. Mindhunter. Stranger Things just... is ending too. Why don't you just Things trust one there. of the best filmmakers ever? Yep. <laughs> Seems like an easy thing to do. Yeah. 
it was interesting. I saw a uh, behind the scenes video on the uh, visual effects of the killer, and it's insane to me how much visual effects that movie has for <laughs> as little as it needs. Needs. I feel like that's kind of Fincher though, because the Social Network did that too. Yeah. Where it's just like that. That was that was fake. What? Why? <laughs> How is this less expensive? <laughs> How does this make more sense? I don't know. I don't know. But, anyways. Come on, okay. Netflix. Why don't well, you just be a decent studio for once? Mm, Gosh dang it. Dude. Fair question. All right. We will uh, we'll get out of y'all's hair. Thanks for hanging out with us uh, live via Twitch, Monday nights, 8 p.m. Central Time. Um, right. We're no longer competing with Monday Night Football, so I expect our viewership to skyrocket. Yeah, like 50 people. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, but we also really appreciate it if you listen to us via the podcast or watch us on YouTube. Um, there has been an issue with uh, some of the – if you have a older slash more unique podcast app um, with some of our recent files, and I'm working on updating those. Pod so bean. hopefully um, <laughs> <laughs> you'll get to listen to, to kind of our end of the 2023 year – um, here soon, uh, but most people, uh, most of our listeners, uh, that has not affected. But yeah. if you, there is ever an issue, please don't hesitate to contact us and let us know. That's I was true. hoping to, I could talk about something, but maybe I'll get to talk about it next week. But okay, uh, this is nice, a little thing. Nice teaser. Yeah. Or do you want to talk about it now? Uh, I don't. No. Okay, we'll talk about it next week. <laughs> I know I'll be able to talk about it next week. Perfect. So. Perfect. All right. Well, until then, we'll see ya. Bye. Goodbye.